In this Warmaster video we shall take a look at the Beastmen. The official Beastmen army list is a fan-made creation, but it's the best they've got at the moment. The Beastmen are sometimes called the Children of Chaos. They are a twisted, degenerate race, shunned by civilization, forced to eke out a wretched existence in the wild regions of the world. The Beastmen combine the physical attributes of humans and animals. The vast majority of Beastmen will have ovine, caprine or bovine features. Although some Beastmen can be canine, simian, reptilian or avian in appearance. The Beastmen came into being during the Great Cataclysm of Chaos. This occurred many thousands of years ago when raw chaos energy flooded the physical world twisting and mutating all living matter that it came into contact with. Many primitive human tribes were corrupted into hideous new bestial forms, whilst some wild animals and livestock attained a level of sentience that allowed them to communicate like men. From these hideous beginnings the race of beastmen were born, and over the millennia their twisted offspring continued to breed, hidden away from civilization in the deep forests. The Beastmen exist in tribal communities called Herds, and like all the minions of Chaos, they are constantly in conflict with each other. This means that only the strongest Beastmen survive to adulthood, and the largest Beastmen are very deadly close combat opponents. Beastmen Herds are shunned by all the civilized nations of the world, so in order to survive, the Beastmen become expert at moving unseen in the wilderness regions they inhabit and launching lightning ambush raids upon isolated communities. Beastmen herds will sometimes be amalgamated into larger chaos armies. And originally the concept of beastmen was simply as another type of unit in a chaos army. However, at around the time the Warmaster game was written, the Warhammer chaos army was split into separate factions. The human minions of Chaos and the demonic minions of Chaos were lumped together into one army book called the Hordes of Chaos in Warhammer 6th edition. Subsequently, the Beastmen were amalgamated with all the other unit types they couldn't fit into the first book and randomly thrown together as one list called Beasts of Chaos. In my opinion, the Beasts of Chaos was a poor army list with little overall theme or coherency and unfortunately for Warmaster, it is upon this list that the Warmaster Beastman army is based. In Warhammer, the Beastman army was further developed. Several very interesting units were added to the roster, and the army was given an overall theme, with the Beastmen being portrayed as both fearful and hateful of civilization, the one thing they can never achieve. However, this revised version of the Beastmen is not reflected by the current Warmaster army list. The majority of Beastmen herds dwell deep within the dark forests of the world, where they are relatively safe from the military might of the more civilised races. Beastmen can also thrive in the more desolate regions of the world such as the Chaos Wastes. The Beastmen are deemed more of a nuisance than a serious threat by most of the civilised nations of the world but occasionally a number of herds may gather together to form a war herd and then the beastmen will march to war. On the tabletop the beastmen play as a horde infantry army with the unique ability to deploy the majority of their infantry units from ambush. This gives the beastman player a unique tactical advantage as your opponent will never be certain from where your forces are going to launch their attack. That is one big pile of shit. The Beastman army list features 10 troop choices and 4 character choices. You must take one Beast Lord as general, and for every thousand points, you must take 2 units of Beast Herd and 2 units of Herd Kin. Remaining unit choices are restricted and they consist of other infantry, cavalry, chariots, and monsters. The character choices bear no resemblance to any other army. Your first compulsory infantry units are Beast Herd, and there is no maximum limit to them. They have the standard light infantry profile common to many armies in Warmaster. We can surmise from the name that a Beast Herd is actually several different types of Beastmen combined into one unit. This would include the larger Gore and the smaller Ungore. 
the light infantry stat line is not really representative of Gore, who are large muscular brutes, more akin to orcs than to humans, but it does suit the Ungore troop type very well. You can deploy up to half of your beast herd units in ambush, which means they don't set up at the start of the game, instead you order them to appear in any piece of dense terrain during your command phase. You can even ambush a whole brigade of four units of beast herd if you wish, and this is one of the key strengths of the army. Although the stat line for beast herd is not that impressive, they are more than capable of providing a serious threat to your enemy's back line when deployed from ambush. Beast herd units which are not deployed in ambush make fine supporting infantry units for your stronger types of infantry. Your second compulsory infantry unit is missile infantry called herdkin and there is no maximum limit to the numbers you may take. Herdkin are made up for the Warmaster list, they're not a beastman unit, but we could surmise that they are the smaller form of Ungor who use bows, or perhaps severely mutated human bandits who've been driven to join the herd through desperation. Herdkin have the standard missile infantry profile common to human armies, and this is somewhat surprising given that the beastmen are not a race known for their archery. Just like the beast herd, up to half your number of herdkin units may be deployed in ambush. And this is a very good way to use them, as they can appear inside dense terrain where they will get defended status, and then you can use their 30cm missile attack to inflict attrition and confusion on the enemy back line. Although they're not exactly a thematic unit for the beastmen, they do give the army a very nice tactical choice. And we might imagine their 30cm range represents the smaller type of beastman scurrying out of the shadows to launch missile attacks before vanishing back into the gloom. The units of Herdkin which are not deployed in ambush can be set up in defendable terrain on your own board side or supported by beast herd units. Bestigor, as the name implies, are the largest, strongest and most heavily armed of all the beastmen. You may take up to two units per thousand points and most players choose to max out on Bestigor as they're the best infantry unit in the army. They have a profile identical to that of Saurus warriors and none of the negative traits that Saurus warriors come with, so for 75 points a unit they are incredibly good value. In my opinion, Bestigor are a crutch unit for the army. The other infantry choices don't accurately represent the ferocity of the beastmen, so the Bestigors have been included to provide some much needed close combat punch. However, Bestigor are so good for their points, they are almost like an overcompensation. Bestigor can't be deployed from ambush, but if you support them with Beast Herd, there's very little that they can't rip their way through. Minotaurs are your fourth infantry choice, and you may take a single unit per thousand points. Minotaurs are a very iconic beastman unit, and they have a heavy infantry profile. Although compared to ogres, they have one more attack and one less point of armour. Minotaurs are a fanatic unit, they have a high number of attacks and are immune to terror, but they must use their initiative to charge and can't use their initiative to evade. In addition, they must always pursue retreating enemies and must always advance. Unfortunately for Minotaurs, this combination of rules make them play like torpedoes. If you don't blink at them, Minotaurs will charge off into enemy lines and then they'll quickly get overwhelmed and cut down, although they should take a good portion of the enemy with them. On the positive side, Minotaurs are your best unit for sending into enemies that have taken up defensive positions, and they're also really good against enemy monsters. However, due to their higher points cost, Minotaurs are just not as good as Bestigor. Bestigor are more reliable than Minotaurs and almost as powerful for a lot less points. And due to this, Minotaurs, one of the most iconic units in the Beastmen army, are rarely picked. Centigor are your first cavalry choice. No! God, please, no! 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 Unfortunately, you did read that right. The list author wrote Centigors to be infantry, despite the fact that Centigors have the stat line and points cost of light cavalry. They're based along the long edge of the base as all infantry are, but they're not allowed to provide support and can't receive support from other infantry. Centigors do have a 360 degree shooting attack and they are allowed to pursue all retreating enemy types, but this combination of rules, stats and points cost makes Centigors the epitome of a failed unit concept. 
I can only surmise that the list author was trying to recreate a Warhammer unit at Warmaster scale, essentially by making a cavalry unit that can go into woods. But the end result is an unusable unit. No Beastman player I know ever takes Sentigor, they are that bad. And it would be the easiest thing in the world to make them a viable unit. Keep their points, keep their stats, just make them cavalry. Chaos Hounds are your first cavalry choice, and they are a cut and paste of Chaos Hounds from the Chaos list. However, just like the Albion list author, the Beastman list has removed the unit cap on Chaos Hounds without increasing their points value. This means you can take up to 6 units of Chaos Hounds per 1000 points for only 40 points a unit. 6 is not a restriction, and this allows you to field an army of cheap, spammable cavalry. Chaos Hounds are excellent for flank attacks, they will make mincemeat of enemy missile infantry or artillery, and they're perfect for running around the rear of engaged enemy units to ensure they're destroyed when forced to retreat from combat. Tuscore Chariots are your chariot choice, and they have the standard chariot profile common to many armies in Warmaster. They are a solid hammer unit for the army combining mobility and punch, but they're useless against enemies that occupy terrain. Oddly, for a race which predominantly inhabits the woods, Beastmen can take up to four units of chariots per thousand points. This is more than the Tomb Kings. Being able to spam your best hammer unit in this way is, in my opinion, another symptom of a poorly written list. Despite this, chariots are an excellent unit choice for the army, and they're very good against enemy cavalry and enemy monsters. Dragon Ogres are your first monster choice. In my opinion, Dragon Ogres have no place in the Beastman list. Dragon Ogres are not a Beastman unit, they are a Chaos Warrior unit, and they already appear in the War Master Chaos Army. Their presence in the War Master Beastman Army is due to the Beasts of Chaos War Hammer Army book, as we've previously discussed. However, there is a Beastman unit which would suit this stat line very well and that is the Razorgore. Razorgore are gigantic mutated monster boars, and a herd of Razorgore thundering across the battlefield would have about the same impact as a unit of Dragon Ogres. As with all units of monsters in Warmaster, their points value is very high indeed, and with only a single unit available per thousand points, they can be easily countered by enemy magic or enemy artillery. But if you do get to charge your Razorgore into an enemy unit that's in the open, their 24 attacks will make mincemeat of anything in their way. Chaos Spawn are your second monster choice and you may take two of them per thousand points. Chaos Spawn are single stand monsters and they nicely represent the variety of hideous mutated creatures that will accompany a Beastman army to war. Chaos Spawn make an excellent supporting choice for your best infantry, which in the Beastman army is your Bestigore. You may add up to one spawn per infantry unit in a brigade, without increasing the size of the brigade. The spawn operates as a tank. It will soak up missile fire and will bounce enemy charges due to its terror and its 3 plus save. The spawn is an entirely defensive monster and will not fare well if sent into combat alone. Spawn must be brigaded with another unit in order to receive orders and cannot join an ambushing brigade. The Dragon Ogre Shagoth is your third monster choice, and you may take a single unit per thousand points. Again, in my opinion, this unit's entry has no place in the Beastman list. It is a Chaos Warrior unit, and has been shoehorned into the Warmaster Beastman list due to the Beasts of Chaos Warhammer book. A much better fit for this stat line would be a Beastman Saigor, which is a gigantic, one eyed, boulder throwing monster. Or a Gorgon a gigantic four-armed minotaur that will devour anything in its path. It would also exactly represent a mutated giant, which often accompany beastman herds to war. Whichever model you want to represent your giant beastman monster, it will play very similar to the giant, which is found in a number of other Warmaster lists. However, in the beastman list, this entry is more expensive than the standard giant, and it also does not have the Giant Goes Wild table special rule. So in effect, the Chaos Beastman list has a less chaotic version of the Giant found in every other list. Still, this aside, fielding a Giant Beastman monster is a very iconic addition to the army. And the Beastman Giant makes an excellent bouncer for your infantry brigades. 
The Beast Lord is your general choice and he has the standard general profile for Warmaster with Command 9 and two attacks in combat. The Beast Lord is a key character for the Beastman army as you're going to need his higher command value to get your ambush orders off. So think carefully before placing him during your turn. The Doom Bull is your second character choice and you may take one per thousand points. The Doom Bull is very similar to the Saurus Hero from the Lizardman list in that it has an awful command value of 6 but adds a lot of attacks in combat, in this case 3. The Doom Bull's role is the same as a character mounted on a monstrous mount from other armies. You're supposed to place him in close combat where he can lend his weight to melee. If you place a Doom Bull into close combat by joining a unit, then the unit becomes immune to terror, but also has to pursue and has to advance. Unfortunately there is a downside to this as once a unit has been joined by a Doom Bull, only the Doom Bull can issue orders to that unit until the Doom Bull leaves. If it weren't for this downside then the Doom Bull would be a very useful and interesting character but unfortunately its special rules make it a rarely picked option. The Wargore is your hero choice and you may take one per thousand points. The Wargore is a standard hero with command 8 and one attack in combat. You are going to need at least one Wargore per thousand points in your army, as your army is likely to be quite large. You're going to need the Wargore's better command range to keep the brigades moving. The Wargore is also a good choice for a chariot mount. In the Beastman list, for some reason you can take unlimited chariot mounts for your characters. In every other army in Warmaster, chariot mounts are limited to one per thousand points. So I assume this is an oversight on the part of the Beastman list writer. The Bray Shaman is your wizard choice and you may take one per thousand points. The Bray Shaman is similar to an elf wizard in that they have command 8 but no attacks in combat. Due to the large nature of your army it's often worth taking one Bray Shaman per thousand points to act as a subordinate commander as their spells are relatively short ranged so you can keep them close to the units you are ordering. Taking a Bray Shaman gives you access to the Beastman spell list the first Beastman spell, Screaming Arrows, is very odd. It's very easy to cast and has a 30 cm range. However, it is designed to boost the shooting attacks of a single unit. And as I've mentioned earlier, the Beastmen are not a faction known for their shooting. However, the wording of the spell is extremely confusing. The spell indicates that a unit affected by this spell will confuse the enemy on a 4+. But it doesn't clarify how this works we might assume that it is referring to the drive back roll for shooting. But this is not what the spell says. As the spell is written it could be argued that any shooting attack made at an enemy will confuse them on a d6 roll of 4+, plus, regardless of any hits are caused or not. So once again this is another example of sloppy list writing for the Beastmen. Hunting for Gore is a standard movement spell, 5 plus to cast 30 cm range and the recipient gets to make a move, which can be a charge into combat. This is a great spell for ordering a chariot charge, but is also really useful for ensuring one of your ambushing units makes it into combat. Chaos Bolt is a standard 30cm 5 plus to cast 3 shooting attack spell which ignores armour, and can be useful for adding a few hits to finish off a unit you've already targeted with shooting. Power of Herd is potentially the best spell in the list, but is very situational. It is brilliant if you've managed to ambush a large number of beast herd units as they will benefit from it the most. However you're going to need a lot of your units to be in melee combat to get the most reward from this spell and it doesn't affect your bestigor or your chariots. A competitive beastman list would be to focus on the bestigor and the chariots and max out on them. But in doing so you are ignoring the one unique feature of the army which is the ability to ambush. Alternately you could go for a heavy hitting list with maximum minotaurs, razor gores and a giant, but in doing so you're ignoring the horde aspect of the army. It is possible to build an army of chaff with maximum hounds and a lot of beast herd to get a nigh unreachable breakpoint, but this sort of army is not competitive at all. It's also possible to build an army which focuses on shooting and magic with a lot of herdkin, but you're going to need a lot of dense terrain to protect your infantry. A good beastman army would be to feature a lot of beast herd which you can put into ambush, maximum bestigors for combat punch, a spawn to accompany them for terror, 
with chariots and hounds for mobility. So why would you choose to play beastmen? Well I doubt it's because of the quality of their army list which in my opinion is the worst in Warmaster. Maybe you are drawn to the beastman aesthetic. They are wild, savage and primitive creatures looked down upon by the civilized nations of the world. So if you like an underdog army, beastmen are for you. Beastmen can appear anywhere in the world and are a good antagonist for any other type of army. Their ambush mechanic is very interesting, giving you a great tactical option that you can capitalize upon. Beastman models are available from online manufacturers and as with all Chaos armies the scope for conversions is fantastic. You can design whatever units you want to fit the stat lines for the Beastman army. The only way is up. In my opinion, the great strength of the Beastman army is its ability to ambush up to half of its core infantry units. It's important not to place too many units in ambush as you're never guaranteed that they'll actually turn up when you want them to or where you want them to. And if you only deploy half of your forces at the start of the game, by the time your ambushing forces turn up you might not have an army left. Still, the ability to put pressure on your opponent's back line right from turn 1 should not be underestimated. An overcautious opponent will not follow their battle plan out of fear of ambushing beastmen leaping out of the forests to attack them. The ability to field more units than your opponent is also a strength. You can afford to send waves of chaff against the enemy's heavy hitters, hoping to wear them down with attrition. And you also have some good sources of terror in the army with the monsters at your disposal, whilst your Minotaurs and Razorgore are immune to terror. I think by now you've gathered that I do not like the Beastman army lists, and this is a shame because I don't dislike the faction as a whole. It's partly due to the scarcity of Beastman armies that the poor list design has gone unaddressed for so long. There are no decent force multipliers in the army, with the Doomball being a very poor example of this. There is no artillery and no flyers, so beastmen find these sorts of troop types hard to deal with. I know that beastmen are supposed to be an amalgamation of hideous creatures thrown together randomly, but there's no need to have this as their army list. The army lacks a cohesive playstyle. The ambush rule is very good, but it only applies to the weakest units in the army. You can have spammable shooting units, spammable chaff units and spammable chariots for no apparent reason but you can't project force across the battlefield well, not even through the ambush rule. And this means you have to rush the enemy. There does not seem to be a balance struck between the unit types either. Some are so good that they are auto-includes, while others are so awful, no sane player would ever take them. So what tactics work well against beastmen? Well, if the beastmen deploy in the open, heavy cavalry will ride straight through them. Knights especially are the bane of beastmen. Knights are also an excellent counter to the spammable chariots and chaff hounds that they can field in large numbers. If the beastmen hug terrain then you're going to need some heavy infantry of your own to dig them out, and anything with ogre stats or above is more than a match for even Bestigore. The larger and more powerful beastman units can be targeted by missile fire, artillery and magic to single them out and confuse them. As they lack decent missile troops of their own, the beastmen are going to have to come after you, so a defensive playstyle will work well against them. Just protect your flanks from ambushes. And finally, as the beastmen have no decent force multipliers of their own, a terror causing character will work wonders against them. So in summary, in my opinion, the beastmen are the red-headed foster child of Warmaster. Nobody seems to care about them. In fact, in my opinion, their list is so bad, you're better off using the Orc list or the Albion list as a substitute for your Beastman models. In fact, I got so frustrated with the current Beastman list that I wrote my own, and there is nothing to stop you doing the same. You can find my alternate Beastman list on the Experimental Rules Forum. Please see the link below. Hopefully, it will give you some ideas to help you make the Beastmen better. <laughs> if you guys were as mean as you are ugly, then maybe you'd be trouble. I'll show you all the true power of Beast Man. You furry flea bitten fool, I'll cover my throne with your hide. You overgrown fur coat, you let him get away.